Foreign Affairs Committee recently, uh, in, in Simon McDonald, who is a, a strategic advisor in, 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 Downing, in Downing Street, seems to me, was asked what was the influence of Britain in uh, bringing the United States to negotiate with the Iranians over Iraq. And he said clearly, we can't take credit for that, one. Second, when uh, in the middle of the Iraq war, when President Bush issued a unilateral letter to Prime Minister Sharon, uh, uh, pledging uh, support for blocks of settlements and uh, uh, waiving entirely the question of the, of, uh, uh, the right of return for Palestinians, um, that was a, a unilateral letter that Britain obviously was not uh, uh, in favor of, but of course could not, could not stop it. Uh, take the Mecca agreement. I think that one of the major mistakes of the Europeans, the major mistakes of the Europeans, was not to oppose the Mecca agreement. Today we have a split uh, uh, Palestinian uh, polity, a split Palesti Palestinian nation that makes uh, 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 Annapolis almost irrelevant because at the end of the day, the, the, pres the, the Palestinian president, president will not be able to deliver precisely because uh, the entire uh, international community, Britain among them, uh, um, uh, did not support them. You've got a pretty wishful split thinking. Israel wishful as well, thinking. haven't you? That's wishful Pardon? thinking. You've got a pretty split Israel yes, as well. Yes, yes, this is exactly. a reality. Yeah. This is yeah. a reality that, uh, no, but, uh, of but, the coalition system, yes. But, that is on but I hand, think you... On one, if I may, Benos, in, in response to this very point, the, the fact of the matter that Annapolis is about putting the issue of the state of Palestine on the table, whether any Israeli likes it or not. So let's not undermine the Palestinian Authority because there's always been an excuse by the Israelis. We do not have a partner to negotiate with. Let's just stick with Britain's you, role here. Baroness Faulkner. You asked a very interesting question, and it's, of course, a matter of cause and effect. I would argue that because it is so closely aligned to the US, it has less leverage. So I'd like to hear from the questioner, yeah, again, please. Yeah, I, I just, I, I mean, I agree with what the, the gist of what you're saying, but surely if by following the United States, Britain has put itself in a position where it alone has the influence to say to Washington or whoever's there, whoever's there next to say, look, maybe this isn't the right way. No, nobody else is getting through. We know from Claire Short's comments, who resigned, the cabinet secretary who resigned over the Iraq war, we know from her that right up to the end, Mr. Blair thought that he would get something for the Middle East. Well, He's become a technical expert. That's what he's become. Have we got, did we get anything for the Middle East out of that adventure? All right, we're going to take a question, please, from the gentleman in the front row there. If we can get him. Mike, too, please. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the proposition have mentioned about the presence of British uh, during World War II in Iraq. And then they mentioned that during Saddam's war, uh, against Iran, also the British were supporting Saddam. So again, we are having British involvement in Iraq, which is in the middle of the, uh, of the uh, 20th century. And eventually, British were involved in Iraq. If I'm seeing the British three times through the whole century, at three different times, whether this involvement is good or bad, isn't that a form of involvement? I think that's a very serious point you make. And <coughs> it may be involvement, the way I'm interpreting, and I think Mr. Ben Ami is interpreting the question, that our role in the Middle East, we want to see as a positive role. You know, you can have an involvement in lots of things that are negative. And, and you can say that we're involved in Iraq. Yes, we're certainly involved. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say we're not, but it's not a positive role. Can I comment on that, if I may? Please, because yeah. I think Britain's at its best uh, when it is close to the United States, but not automatically agreeing with everything the United States does. And there, that has been the way in which most British prime ministers, before Tony Blair and probably Gordon Brown now, uh, will operate. Uh, Winston Churchill once said, you can always rely on the Americans to do the right thing after they've tried every other option. <laughs> that may still be true. And, and when, you were, when you were Foreign Secretary, um, how much did you oh, have to tell well, well, the American line? Well, I'll tell you. I, when I was a junior minister in the Foreign Office, the United States were threatening uh, that the United Kingdom and other European countries would have sanctions imposed on them if we insisted on trading with the Soviet Union on a gas pipeline. I was sent to Washington to talk to Kenneth Dam, who was the American Deputy Secretary. Eventually, we reached a compromise with me and Kenneth Dam, the only thing we couldn't agree was whether it would be called well, the Rifkin Dam <coughs> Agreement or the Dam Rifkin Agreement. <laughs> I think that, um, on, on, Ira Ira yeah, on Iraq, because you know, mm. I happened to be based at the United Nations and I followed all the negotiations that took place on the invasion of Iraq. I'll tell you, Baroness, it's not fair to say that the British did not try to stop 
this train going to war. I think the mistake, and that history will tell us later, but I think uh, the British policymakers banked on Colin Powell uh, rather than the Pentagon, and the Pentagon won over Colin Powell in, and, and the British argument. So there was an attempt, I'm not giving that as an excuse to say in the final analysis, the, you know, the buck stops with the decision makers, but there was an attempt to influence the direction by trying to ease up the, the drive for war and banking on Colin Powell. Unfortunately, he was set up himself also by the neoconservatives. All right, may I think, uh, Very briefly, and then I'm going to take another question. We've got a lot of people. I think that the, be the best proof that uh, the, the policy of uh, unrewarded intimacy with the United States has gone back bankrupt is the new policy that is being launched now by Gordon Brown about what he called hard-headed hard internationalism. That is, 